Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a beautiful and a sad day for me because this is one of the final installments of this year in perfume. And um, I thought it was a fantastic way to just talk about different fragrances because I found that a lot of times there are these connections that come out uh, when you smell a fragrance or when you study a house and the direction that they're going in a particular year. Other houses are watching what other houses are doing. And um, so sometimes trends end up getting picked up and you can you can kind of see trends in the industry and what's going on. I just thought it was a great way to kind of compare fragrances from my collection uh, and talk about fragrances and show them off. And everyone loves lists and stuff like that. So I came up with this idea and it was a huge hit. Um, probably some of my wa most watched videos. And um, part of me is sad that the uh, uh, series is going to be coming to an end. But the other part is happy that we can move on to something else because these will stay up on the channel. People who find the channel who are newer to the channel have a lot of content to go back and watch. A lot. We're coming up on 900 videos, which is crazy. Um, so let's do scent of the day. This unfortunately has to be... I'm going to say I'm going to try to keep this under an hour, but God knows if I'll actually be able to. But um, a couple things before we get started. Remember, this is just my opinion when we go through these, okay? So um, number one is not better than number 25. Number two is not better than number 24, so forth and so on. Also, it just so happens that this is the year I really kind of pared back my buying. Some of the most rare fragrances in here, whether it's like one out of 75 made for the whole world. There's one in here that's one out of 50 for the whole world. Um were sent to me by the brands, okay? So don't feel like you have to run out and try to find every single one of these. Uh, building a collection is a marathon. It is not a sprint. Uh, if you're newer to the fragrance game, a lot of folks kind of throw themselves head first in and try and buy everything, and that is a mistake. You really want to let your nose mature. When you first start, you shouldn't be buying bottles. You should be buying decants, in my opinion, because you want your nose to smell of a lot of different things. Uh, before you start committing to bottles that in a couple of years from now you'll hate anyways because you've changed in in your direction in the way in the way that your nose smells literally evolves. So that is my two cents on it. So some of these are rare and they're going to be hard to find. A lot of them are sold out. There's a lot of ouds at the top because oud has kind of been my thing in the last couple of years. Um, so just keep that in mind when we're going through the list. And again, this is just my opinion today. Ask me tomorrow and my thoughts very well may change, okay? So um, let's do scent of the day real quick because today is a special one. It's actually the very first time that I had a chance to wear this as my scent of the day. And it is none other, none other than a Roberto Capucci fragrance. And man, I am in love with this stuff. I'll tell you this, I shocked how much I enjoyed it. I wore it to work today. It fit brilliant in the office. It fits my personality to a T. I was telling a friend that if I was a, a male alive in the in the late 60s and old enough to wear perfume, um, this would probably be what I would wear. Not Eau Sauvage or any of those other freshies. This is me through and through. This is called Sang Royale by Roberto Capucci. And you can kind of see the short ingredient list. Um, and this is long, long discontinued, but uh, Roberto Capucci put out a line of four of these. And this really makes me want to collect the other three uh, in this line. But this was very kindly sent to me by Armando. If you watched my uh, 8,000 subscriber unboxing special, then uh, you, you saw me unbox this very recently. And today I wore it as my scent of the day for the first time. And I am in love with this scent. Oh my God. I mean, <laughs> you know what it's like, and, and I'm just going to say this from one wear. This is just my opinion. It's like a 1960s version of Antaeus meets Akitos by Alain Delon. Imagine kind of blending those two together. But remember, this is 13 years before Antaeus. Um, but the animalic facets are all there with the civet. The, the citruses are a little bit more in the green notes are, are heavier in this than in Antaeus. So it's almost like a precursor to what came in the green 1970s, mixed with Antaeus 13 years before, mixed with the musky animalic side of Akitos. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And if you've been following my channel, you know that there are a couple places that have my heart right now. One is the artisanal perfume space and oud. The other is vintage perfume. And this is why. I mean, and, and, and I saw bottles ranging from 35 to 50, 70 bucks online. 
what a steal when houses like Louis Vuitton and Roja and MFK are asking three, four, five hundred dollars, right? Um, what a steal finding this quality of fragrance for 30, 40, 50 bucks. It just it doesn't happen nowadays. So I am, I am in love with that, that, that you're going to hear about Sang Royale much more on the channel. Um, okay. So that was my scent of the day and a very positive first wear. So let's put ourselves back in 2023, which is not hard to do because it feels like it was just yesterday. It's only April the 17th of 24. So uh, we've got a while before the next This Year in Perfume happens, which will be at the end of 2024. I'll do it as like a celebration, maybe on New Year's Day or something like that. Um, so we've got a while before one of these fragrance videos happens again for This Year in Perfume. But we always put ourselves back in what was going on. So 2013, some major thing that was going on. Um, there was the uh, death of Henry Kissinger. That was big news. Uh, there was the Russian mutiny, as they say. And then I think the general who... Uh, mutinied, randomly died in a plane crash. Surprise, surprise. Um, there was the Turkey and Syria earthquake, which was horrible. I remember the news. I actually work with a guy who's Turkish, and I mean, his family's okay, but he was giving me updates of what was going on during that uh, earthquake and, and terrible stuff. And then, of course, the, the one piece of news that will instantly bring everyone back to 2023, the stupid Titan submarine submersible accident um, how that even passed inspection or whatever. And, and I mean, uh, just crazy, crazy stuff, but, um, a million memes based on that submarine to go see the, uh, Titanic, uh, which did not make it unfortunately. And, um, so, so yes, uh, that is bringing us back to 2023, which again, just feels like yesterday. Uh, and some songs that put, got put out in 2023. In interestingly enough, Karma by Taylor Swift, uh, I'm Good by David Guetta and um, Kill Bill by SZA, Die For You by The Weeknd. There's a song that you've probably heard everywhere, Die For You by The Weeknd. Um, Flowers by Miley Cyrus, Something in the Orange, Zach Byron. Uh, I, I don't even know any of these people. Who, who are these people? Just Wanna Rock by Lil Uzi Vert. Um, I guess he likes Uzis. And uh, Calm Down by Rema. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Search and Rescue by Drake. Okay, so that was some top songs. If there's other songs that we should check out from 2023, leave it in the comments. Uh, and some movies, Oppenheimer, definitely Oppenheimer. That was the one movie I've seen from um, that I actually watched in the theaters in recent times. Uh, and it was it was okay. It um, it was okay. I'll leave it at that. There, there was some of the modern propaganda in there that just made me roll my eyes. I just can't help myself. It's just every time I see it, I, I have the curse of seeing right through the propaganda where most people, I think, just take it all in and let it wash over them. And every time I see it, it just pisses me off. So um, there's a little bit of that in there. Of course, there was the Barbie movie, which I heard was stupid and filled with the modern propaganda. John Wick Chapter 4, which I want to see. Um, the Holdovers, Poor Things. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Creed 3, uh, what else came out in 23? Wonka, um, Bo is Afraid, which is one of the stupidest movies I've ever seen in my life. I actually accidentally watched that one night while I was just sitting on the couch and it was on. I was like, what in the world is this? Um, so yes, uh, Mission, apparently there was a Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay, so that puts us back in, in the mood for in what was going on in 2023. Okay, so let's get started. This is a top 25. There's not a lot of bottles, I'll tell you that right now. Most of the bottles come from one collection and a couple of the really rare ones that got sent to me for free uh, make, make the full bottle list. But there are not a lot of bottles in here. There is a lot of samples. And based on my rules, again, if I did a sample and there's a review on the channel where you can go back and really see my thoughts, then I'm putting it in the ranking. Okay? So, um, so you, there's a ton of samples. Let's put it that way. It's a top 25. Okay? Uh, so you can see the lists are starting to compress the more and more we get to the present. But I do have a lot of honorable mentions. There's a handful of fragrances that came out in 2023 that I would like to discuss on the channel. Um, Amouage DF40 is one such fragrance that I have not done a video on, but Ali very kindly sent me a decant. So one of these days I'll get around to doing a video, maybe a comparison between DF Woman and DF40. 
Uh, they also did a couple of fragrances like Lineage, Purpose, and Search, which if you um, go check out my uh, go check out my live streams you, and you go back for further enough, <laughs> further enough, is that even a word? Far enough, you will see a live stream on that collection of lineage and purpose and search and all that stuff. Um, that came out in 2023, the beginning of 2023, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, uh, the Arise Ladore Classics Collection came out in 2023 which I don't have any full bottles of because I couldn't buy any bottles at the time, but Russian Adam very kindly sent me decants of all of them. So there is a live stream on the Classics Collection if you'd like to hear about things like Walima 2 and Russian Oud 2 and, and all of that stuff, right? That's all on the live stream section as well. Um, Argos Birth of Venus is a uh, release that I have a decant of thanks to the brand sending me a sample set that I, I'll talk about on the channel one of these days. Uh, Bortnikov's Oud al Sultan, which um, I heard some bad things about today by somebody in the comments section of my previous Bortnikov video, but that did come out in 23. I have not reviewed that one yet. Clandestine Laboratories Wendover, I've got a sample floating around somewhere. Digit and Zach Galia Reflection, which is from their Animalic line. Very, very excited. I think Paul sent me that. I can't remember. Or John. Uh, very kindly sent me some samples, so I'll, I'll review that very soon, hopefully. Electimus Gladiator Oud, uh, which is a house I don't think I've ever talked about on the channel. It's kind of a... I don't know. I think it's a little bit of like a Instagram slash hype house. I don't know what to make of Electimus yet, but uh, we'll see. We'll see once I do the review what what the quality of the juice is like. Uh, Francesca Bianchi has a 2023 release called Byzantine Amber, which um, I have had a chance to smell that one. I haven't done a video on it yet. I do like Byzantine Amber, though. That's that's a, a good fragrance. Um, I like the leathery aspects of it. Goldfield and Banks Ingenious Ginger, which I don't think that's a brand I've discussed on the channel yet either. Uh, Gross Smith's King Salute, which was kind of a honor or a salute, or as the British do it, a salute. Um, to um, King Charles is uh, um, being sworn in as as king, and Grossmith is a brand I really, really, really rate. Everything I've smelled from them is so quality. I think if I had just an unlimited amount of funds and there was a niche house I was going to go after, Grossmiths are just so beautiful. Some of them may lean traditionally feminine for some men out there, but if you like vintage Guerlains and stuff like that, you have to get your nose on Grossmith. It is unbelievably. Um, it is, it's just an unbelievable experience. Uh, Heaven Duff's Oud Sammy, which is a house that, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, uh, I liked one or two of their offerings. Oud Sammy, I don't know if I had a chance to smell, but uh, maybe I'll get a chance to review more from, because they did send me some decants, so maybe I'll review more from Heaven Duff later on. Uh, Javori did a release called Musk Palace in 2023, which I've got a sample of. Um, uh, thanks to Nick, he very kindly sent me a bunch of recent Javoy samples. I've got a ton of Javoy content that I could do for you guys. And then there's this brand called Kashti, which I reviewed one of their Atars, so it did make the 2023 list because it was a 2023 release. But also, a lot of their spray fragrances came out in 2023. Like, for example, um, Rose Oud is one. And so this is uh, one example of their spray fragrances, which I have not talked about on the channel but I will very soon, and they're good. Um, they're good stuff. It's a 100% natural brand from India. Um, and I think a lot of these other ones, yeah, like D Devatev was also a 2023 release. So I think a lot of these were 23. So you'll be hearing more about this brand as time goes on. It's just, it's just time. Everything is just time. You know, it's just having time to talk about so many different fragrances. And when you want your channel to be a little bit of an encyclopedia like mine, it's a never-ending stream. I mean, literally, it's never-ending. I could probably talk about fragrances until the day I die and probably not make a huge dent, but you have to prioritize what you're going to talk about. Um, so Kashti is a brand you'll hear a little bit more about. Um, and then M. Mikalaf, someone sent me a decant of a, a fragrance called Red Colorado, which have not reviewed yet, but, it, but that came out in 23. Uh, the Mask Milano Oud Collection, which I think was a cheap money grab, but I will... Um, Try to maybe do some comparison videos. Sorry, this is bothering me. Um, I will try to do some comparison videos on the ouds versus the non ouds. So I have samples of all of the just regular tango and um, 
you know, Russian tea and all of that stuff. And then I also have samples of like Tango Oud, Russian tea Oud. So maybe I'll do comparison videos one of these days or a live stream or something. Um, Roja's Pierre de Valet or Valet uh, the Oud uh, came out in 2023. Um, Prin Prasana's uh, Krisana and Nilubal, Nilubal came out in 2023. Uh, which I have samples of somewhere and I haven't reviewed yet. Rasai Fort put out three new fragrances in 23, one called Ismi, one called the Oud Caravan, and one called Kava, which I'm actually, I, I probably should get on talking about some of those. Uh, and then there's more Sherwoods to discuss, which stupidly I forgot uh, Sherwood Czar in the 2022 video, so apologies, but I will make up for that with um, uh, some Sherwoods in this video. But Czar should have been in the 2022 video from Sherwood. That was one of my favorite fragrances from 2022 that it got left out. That was just, uh, there's just so many fragrances in one me. I need that hot assistant, I keep saying. Um, but uh, when you do it on your own, sometimes mistakes happen. So accept my extreme apologies. They do have a new fragrance coming out, which I'm very excited to sniff one day. Um, and Statique Olfactif is, is a brand that someone sent me a sample of. And the fragrance is called Into the Wild. And I believe Darren Allen uh, who's a indie perfumer, um, but he does have some classical training, was the perfumer of Into the Wild, so I'm excited to get to know that. And then, just as for shits and giggles, someone sent me a decant of Unique Luxuries 2023 release called Mango Nificent, and just for sniffs, I wore it to bed once, uh, and I almost slept zero hours that night. It is one of the worst things I've ever smelled in my life. Uh, my pillow smelled of it afterwards. It was just an absolute nightmare. Pure amber wood hell to me. Uh, and then someone sent me a decan of Zerjoff's uh, Elixir, I believe it's called, um, somewhere. God knows where that is, but maybe one of these days I'll do a video on that. So that is the honorary mentions for 2023 that you may hear talked about on Channel Ram. Okay, let's get into the top 25. Number 25 is actually the review I did yesterday, or the late night insight video, and it's from the house of Bortnikov, and it's Maxim's creation called Les Voyages Orientales. I really did not like this, and I'm really hoping this is a one-off and that when Maxim Bortnikov puts out his own brand, which is coming out very soon, I got an alert that um, he is starting his own brand. And um, I think it's going to be called Maxim. So he's the son of Dmitry Bortnikov. And Dmitry Bortnikov was very sick for a little while. He was in the hospital. Um, and, I mean, at some point they were worried he was going to die. Luckily he pulled through. Everything's okay. But uh, there was a point in time where he was just trying to stay alive, forget running the house, right? So I think Maxim stepped in and um, kind of, you know, played the role of perfumer in some of these. And this is one of them from 2023. It's called Le Voyage Oriental. Go watch my video from, from yesterday. But there's something about the, the citruses that Bortnikov has been using since the end of 2022 that I don't like in there. For, I don't like, I don't know why. Their, their citruses smell very plasticky and cheap. Some of them smell like toilet cleaners. Some of them smell just plasticky and cheap. Like this one didn't smell like toilet cleaners to me, Le Voyage Oriental. But um, it, it smelled plasticky, uh, and I didn't like the way the citruses come together. And then on top of it, there was this weird, chalky, powdery vanilla that reminded me of Pez candies. You know, the Pez dispensers, um, and how the, the candies would sometimes get crushed in there and leave this residue. So imagine, like, powdery, candied sweetness mixed with uh, cheap, plastic-smelling citruses. And then on top of it, there was uh, something in there that started to make the fragrance smell like mustard seed. And I was just like, what in the hell is this? Uh, and the worst part is most people buy Bortnikov to smell real musk and real oud. And they claimed there was real musk and real oud, but I couldn't smell a whiff of it, at least not on my skin. I'm not saying there isn't real musk or real oud. I'm just saying I couldn't smell a single whiff of it in there. And that is a problem when you're a, a, an artisanal brand. That is your selling point. That's why people want to smell your stuff. So I'm disappointed with the direction Bortnikov has been going. Some people started to tell me, hey, things have changed with some of their newest releases from 2024, like Rich. Uh, they actually put one out called Rich and maybe one or two others that I should smell those. I haven't smelled those yet. But rumor is it's been turned around, but we'll have to wait and see on that front. So number 25, that's a long way of saying Number 25 is Bortnikov's Le Voyage Oriental. Number 24 is another Bortnikov, and it's called Scheherazade. And you can see from one of my favorite artisanal houses when they put out things like, um, you know, Oud Maximus, Oud Monarch, uh, Chipre du Nord, Mas Khabib, 
um, uh, Amber Cologne, all this stuff that I absolutely love and adore. Uh, Mysterious Oud is another one. Go watch my Bortnikov playlist. I reviewed a ton of Bortnikovs within the last three or four months. Um, I've been on a artisanal roll, if you will. And, um, but this one came out in 2023 and it's called Scheherazade. So Scheherazade is at number 24. And what a far cry from the names I just mentioned, the ones I absolutely love to the stuff that came out in 2020, end of 22 to 2023. Um, between those colognes, like Cologne de Fa or whatever it was, Cologne de la Terre, all, I hated those. Just some of the, my most hated colognes I've ever smelled. And then you put out stuff like Scheherazade, which Scheherazade wasn't as bad as Le Voyage Oriental to me, but it was just a boring fragrance. It was just a boring, fruity, you know, fresh oud thing that I, I'm just like, where where are the beautiful Bortnikov florals? They're completely missing. That's why I have a conspiracy theory that Maxim Bortnikov actually worked on stuff that is not listed to his name because none of this smells like nothing I've ever smelled from Dmitry Bortnikov. These two smell closer to each other than this smells to Dmitry Bortnikov's previous work, right? So my conspiracy theory is that Maxim played a bigger role in what was done with the house. Um, yeah, huge apricot note. Um, black currant absolute. I mean, it's a nice, fruity, sweet, fruity fragrance. Uh, I remember Woods, but and, and maybe there was a Malaysian oud note or something in there. But um, it, uh, again, the oud was not near prominent enough for, for an artisanal brand like this. And uh, it was just boring. I, it was not anywhere near what I expected. Go check out my review if you want more details. But needless to say, the fact that Bortnikoff's um, went from one of some of my favorites to being last on the list in 2023 tells you how far they've fallen from grace. Uh, so hopefully they can get back on track, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, and hopefully Maxim's house, when it, when the new, there's three fragrances coming out. Um, I have the names, but they're in the, my email and I don't know if they want me to share it yet. So I'm not going to share it, but there's three fragrances. Um, I'm excited to talk about them on the channel. I don't know if the brand's going to just send me one or if the brand's going to send me all three, but I told them whatever they sent me, I'll talk about on the channel. So, but, but they know that I also do positive and negative reviews. So they know that I'm going to give them, give you my thoughts, good or bad. Uh, but I'm excited. I am actually excited to smell those Maxim fragrances. So we'll see. Number 23 is a Digit and Zach fragrance, and it's called Tibetan Incense. Also a fragrance I reviewed within the last couple weeks. And um, Tibetan Incense is a fragrance that has um, cinnamon, silver fir, clove, nutmeg, cardamom, with benzoin, siam, Indian oud, nagarmatha oil, birch tar, cedarwood, frankincense, labdanum, musk, myrrh, oud, saffron, and sandalwood. So you would see that note listing and you would think, my God, what a beast this is going to be. Labdanum, birch tar, myrrh, oud, saffron, clove, uh, sandalwood, frankincense, cypriol, all these heavy notes, right? It wears very light. It wears like uh, in my review, I think I said something along the lines of this wears like, you know, a monk teaching you a story with pa teaching you a lesson, but with patience, you know, they're not just going to slap you over the head. Uh, they're going to let you fail and they're going to sit back and they're going to watch and they're going to let you learn at your own pace. There is something patient about this. There's something almost like knowledgeable. It is nice. I like the cinnamon combo with the silver fur, uh, which is like a green... You know, imagine like a green piney like scent, but nowhere near as rough as the pine in what I mentioned earlier, like the, the incoming uh, 70s style green piney, like think about polo green. It's nothing like that. It's a it's a sweeter, smoother take on on the green note. And even the clove is not aggressive. It's not, uh, you know, that eugenol smelling clove is very kind of toned down. And um, it just feels like a soft whisper. Instead of a hardcore incense, it's like a soft whisper. It's nice. I like it. I just, um, you know, for 30 mils or whatever it is, I, I mean, I wouldn't buy this, but but it's not bad. Um, it felt like a little bit of a niche version of something like, um, oh gosh, uh, it, it felt like a niche version of something like Kenzo Jungle Porom 
which is a Olivier Cresp spicy fragrance from the 90s, you know, or or if you think about Clive Christian X or something along those lines, it felt like a niche version of, of those kind of spicy type masculine leaning fragrances. Spicy and resinous and all that stuff. I like it, but um, you'll have to go check out my review for further thoughts. But uh, needless to say, not one of my favorites at uh, number 23. Number 22 is a full bottle. And this is one that I think is a limited edition. And this was sent to me by the brand. Um, this was sent to me by Peter Carter. And it's the only bottle I actually have from his line. I don't own any other full bottles. But I do have some samples from this house, from Centauri Perfumes, that I would like to discuss on the channel. Uh, again, it's all about time. And uh, this is called Elixir. Whoops, I guess that doesn't show you anything. Well, the back says Elixir. Uh, and this is a extra de Parfum, 30 mils. I love this bottle, by the way. Um, this bottle is an absolute work of art. And I wish you could feel how heavy this cap is. I mean, this cap is just so intricate and beautiful. And it's heavy and um, like you're holding a Bronze Age statue. Now, this fragrance is beast mode. Uh, this is a super powerful fragrance. Here's the note listing right here. Um, so you can see you've got cognac, coffee, caramel, sandalwood, patchouli, sandalwood, and musk. And um, I think in my review I said something like when I used to vape... Um, I, there was like this flavor. Remember, if you've ever if you've ever vaped, they have all these crazy flavors out there, right? And I had one, and it was like um, I don't know. It was like coffee cake and and whipped cream, and but this has this breakfast syrup like feel with cognac and rum and liqueur, and maybe it's the coffee giving it this breakfast like feel and a caramel note. Um, and so it's a liqueur, it's like a gourmand, it's like, imagine Bond number no. 9, uh, uh, New Harlem, but with a uh, niche or, or sort of indie style like uh, liqueur note. So it's got the cognac, it's got the rum. You know, if you like liqueur fragrances and you like fragrances that are intense, check this one out. This is an intense wear, very, very intense. Um, and it dries down to Texas cedar and sandalwood. It's actually a beautiful fragrance um, and musk. So beautiful fragrance, but um, big, loud, bold. If you like vintage fragrances, if you like your fragrances big and loud and bold, check out uh, Centauri's Elixir. I don't know if there's any bottles left. I think it was a limited edition, if I'm not mistaken. But um, but if, if there are some bottles left, uh, that, that could be one to check out. So Centauri's Elixir at number 22. Uh, number 21 is a uh, fragrance by the house of Zoologist, which I could not find the sample I tried, but I'm not going to spend all night looking for a sample. Uh, you can go check out my review. It's called Harvest Mouse. And Harvest Mouse uh, is perfumed by an up-and-coming perfumer. Well, he's kind of not up-and-coming now. He's kind of made it. I see him all over the place now. His name is Luca Maffei. Uh, I think he's an Italian perfumer. And this fragrance is um, one of the few fragrances I've ever smelled that has a beer CO2 extract. So it's supposed to be kind of um, sweet and spicy. and But also I think there's supposed to be some something that is like um, sort of uh, enveloping. Like imagine like a mouse sitting in like hay or like a... like um, uh, you know, a field trying to hide. Uh, there's something um, sort of comforting about almost like the hay is on top of the mouse, you know. But I got big vibes of like an oud fragrance. There was something in the way that the hay, the beer, uh, CO2, the rose, the peru balsam, um, the spices, how it all kind of came together. And it gave me this feeling of like an oud fragrance. I don't know why. But it reminded me of like modern oud fragrances for some reason. I need to revisit it. Some people compare it to um, Memoirs of a Trespasser. And I could see that because of the vanilla and, and um, you know, there's almost like this uh, uh, Harvest Mouth ha has almost like this barn style feel to it. Memoirs of a Trespasser has like um, almost like this, um, like uh, just imagine, you know, like... Um, 
how could I describe it? Almost like uh, the uh, wood that uh, almost like the like the la cord, not la cord wood, but um, like the barrels that they make cognac in and stuff like that. But imagine like a slightly boozy take on it. So the wood gives off these like tannins and makes it feel boozy and stuff like that, but with vanilla. And 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 that's um, that's the comparison I think to Harvest Mouse. But man, I had a hard time describing that. See if I can spit out some words, Ramsey. So um, okay. So Harvest Mouse uh, comes in at number 21. Number 20, back to zoologist, we have Tiger. So Tiger um, is a beautiful fragrance. And if you like, I would say, classically leaning, yeah. I mean, if you like fragrances that um, have some, some style to them and, you know, they wear, not necessarily discreet, but um, they're elegant type fragrances. I really think Tiger falls into one of those categories. I've got a full review on the channel. You can go check it out. But this is basically a vetiver fragrance to my nose. This is built around vetiver, okay? But it's a modern vetiver fragrance. It's got this kind of uh, sweet and sour kumquat at the top, which is a note that you don't see very often. Excuse me. It's got saffron, which makes it very modern, um, and cardamom. And then one of the main notes in here is frankincense. And the frankincense almost works with the vetiver because the vetiver in here is kind of tag teamed with this papyrus note. And the papyrus adds this kind of dark, smoky, papery, like imagine Lost Scrolls in a live in the long lost Al Alexandria library, right? And, and just imagine smelling the paper and imagine smelling like the age that the paper has on it, right? So you can almost smell the age on the paper mixed with the earthy vetiver. And vetiver sometimes can have, um, you know, sort of spicy, smoky elements in and of itself. And the frankincense in here enhances that. So it almost like it works with the vetiver, but in a classy way because there's this um, carrot seed. And the carrot seed almost feels like an iris. And iris always makes fragrances feel posh. So this adds this sort of, Classically masculine, posh smell. Woody, spicy, beautiful fragrance. Um, you know, probably full bottle worthy if, if you're into those type of fragrances. Tiger's very well done. Um, Cristiano Canali is the perfumer of Tiger. So, um, good stuff by Zoologist. Tiger at number 20. Number 19 is another decant that I couldn't find. And it's from the house of Lilabo. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. So, um, uh, I know exactly who sent me that decan, actually, and they do not want to be named. So thank you to my perfume god person who wants to remain anonymous. Um, but Lalabo is a house I don't get to talk about very often, especially not new Lalabos and especially not new city-exclusive Lalabos. So they actually sent me that. I think Shanghai was the city-exclusive for this one. It's called Myrrh 55. And uh, Myrrh 55, I thought, was a good fragrance, but I remember it being extremely floral. So there was a lot of jasmine. Um, a lot of jasmine mixed with myrrh. It's not just a myrrh-heavy fragrance. It's a floral, resinous. Myrrh can sometimes give off this um, almost like... Um, uh, I, would, I would almost say like this um, fungal feel. You know, and that's how it felt in Mer 55, like this fungal, earthy type feel, resinous, earthy, warming, but mixed with jasmine. And they claim ambergris and oud. But I enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, I um, I would I would I need to spend more time with it. I need to spray it on before bed occasionally. But I enjoyed it. Go check out my review if you are interested in learning more about Mer 55. So that is at number tw at 19, number 18 is the Kashti fragrance I was talking about earlier. This is called Amritha Bindu, hell of a name, um, which I go into the meaning of the name and all that on the review. But um, if you take a look, there is actually, let me see if I can get you to see. So if you take a look in here, you will be able to see the remnants of actual ambergris and musk pot, um, um, like um, musk grains. Let's see if I can see some. 
Anyways, um, well, they are in there. I saw them the other day, but it's hard to catch them on the on the channel. Uh, yeah, I can see them if I look. But there's these. Uh, you can see the the musk grains and oh, here we go. Maybe if we do it this way. If you look right, you see them right there, right there. There you go. Um, those are the real musk grains and real and and pieces of ambergris. So I said this is a great starter atar. Like um, it's it's simple. There's nothing. It's not going to wow you like the Sultan Pasha Atars, okay? So it, go watch my Sultan Pasha Atar reviews if you want to hear about some crazy Atars with some extremely rare ingredients, you know, some rare Ensar Ouds, rare Taif Roses, rare Rose Alba Atos and stuff like that. This is Ambergris Musk Rose Tobacco with Oud and Sandalwood. And Sandalwood almost feels like the carrier in here. If you've never smelled real sandalwood, this is a great fragrance to smell. Um, this gives you an idea of real sandalwood with that smooth, creamy, milky, spongy, you know, feeling that it has. It really makes the fragrance feel like it has weight, you know, like you can pinch it like a sponge and it'll pop back. Um, and 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 it's it's just a simple, technically sound, beautiful fragrance. And I've been getting more and more into Atars. Um, you know, I really, Sultan Pasha really got me into Atars, but these are, these are really good value for money, I think. They're not super expensive. Um, in India, I think it's a little more cost effective for some of them to make some of these type of fragrances, and um, it's, it's 100% natural. So, it's, uh, this is a, Kashti is a brand that really prides themselves on, on 100% natural. But they actually do last. This, this lasted, I, when I wore it, it lasted a long time. But you can go check out my review if you want more detail on Amritha Bindu at number 18. Number 17 is the first of Feel Oud. And it is Sunrise and Set. Right there at the top. Sunrise and Set. So I've got a full review on the channel. You can check it out. Um, Sunrise and Set reminds me a lot of Ocularia Blossom without the heavier resinous materials in the base, like the myrrh and stuff like that. It's like a lighter, uh, citrusy, you know, fougere smelling take on oud. Um, bitter orange, lemons, magnolias, cedar, cardamom, patchouli, vetiver, and Indian oud. They say, um, Fresh, sparkling fougere composition with a touch of natural Indian oud opens to reveal the warmth of a fresh sunrise. So go watch my review. I liked um, Sunrise and Set, but uh, I like Ocularia Blossom better. I think if I was going to get one of the two, it would be Ocularia Blossom. But Sunrise and Set is good at um, number 17. Number 16 is an Amouage, which I just didn't feel like finding the uh, sample, but it's Jubilation 40. I did a comparison video between Jubilation 40 and Jubilation... 20, uh, for men, 25 for men, um, and Jubilation 40 uh, did not fare well, I'll tell you that, um, in that comparison video. However, however, uh, wearing it on its own without comparing it to its older and better brother, in my opinion, um, I have started to uh, not hate it as much. Let's put it that way. I don't like it yet. I don't hate it as much. Uh, but it's growing on me. I'm starting to feel, so I can start to see some of the heavier aspects, the amped up a pop and axe and all that stuff. And, uh, the, the bay rum and, and, um, you know, the, the boozy feeling in the opening. So, um, yes, Jubilation 40. I, I think if you have just regular Jubilation for, for men, you don't, you don't need the exceptional X-ray. But uh, just ranking it on its own in this list, I'd put it at number 16. Number 15 is a sample, uh, which I actually put ahead of Jubilation 40. It's called King Blue at number 15. Um, King Blue felt like a softer, easier-to-wear version of um, Silver Oud. I prefer Silver Oud. I felt like there was more castorium, more heavier elements in there, more leathery elements. Um, but, you know, go go watch my review of King Oud, King Blue. I wasn't kind to it in the review. Uh, but ranking it against things like Tiger or Mer 55, I, I would I would wear King Blue over some of those. So um, it comes in at number 15. Would I buy a bottle? Hell no, especially not for $500. Um, but uh, but go 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 check out my thoughts if you want to chuckle at number 15, King Blue. Number 14 is a Sherwood fragrance. 
And um, this is a fragrance that I own a bottle of, but I have not done a review yet, but I should because I wore this a couple times as my scent of the day. This is what his packaging looks like on just his regular line. Maybe one of the uh, best value for money brands I discovered in 2023. Sherwood, uh, um, Sherwood is owned by a, uh, a chap named Prakar Gupta. And um, he is a fragrance enthusiast because he has a real full-time job. He does this on, on the side almost um, because he loves fragrances. And I mean, just look at this note listing, okay? Look at the note listing. Just pause that and, and look at it. It is... It, it's longer than most Roja note listings. Um, lots of lemons and bergamots and limes and lavender in the opening. Rosemary, orange blossom, um, lily of the valley, champaca, heliotrope, mimosa, absolute, cassie, absolute. Uh, green tea is, I, I would characterize this as a green tea heavy fragrance um, with a lot of other things going on. Uh, coriander. Holy Basil from uh, Tamil Nadu, Black Pepper, Anise, Aniseed, uh, Indonesian Patchouli, Oak Moss Absolute, Virginian Cedarwood, Carrot Seeds, Tonka Bean, Juniper Berry, Spanish Labdanum, Madagascar Vanilla, Absolute, Styrax, Orris Root, Birch Tar, Castorium, Leather, Ambergris, and Musk. And he uses real Ambergris in these. And you could get a bottle like this, which I think is 50 mil, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is 50 mil. Um... So 50 mil bottle you could get for 70 bucks or something. It was a crazy value for money. One of the best value for money. And when I first wore this the first time, I was like, eh. I mean, it is called Gentleman, so I understand it's supposed to be not a little more nondescript. But I wanted it to project more, and it really sat close to the skin, and I didn't like it. But the other day, well, not that I didn't like it because I liked the fragrance. I didn't like how it projected, okay? So the other day, I came back to it and revisited it. And since it's been sitting in the bottle, after some air got in, it's gotten stronger. Um, so I need to give it a full wear again and see if it wears a little bit different and maybe do a full review. Uh, but that is Gentleman by uh, Sherwood. Beautiful, beautiful. Actually, Gentlemanly fragrance. Um, great for the warm weather, too, by the way. So Sherwood Gentleman at um, number 14. And I don't know if you can see the quality of this box, but it's like, I mean, it's got like this almost like carpeting around it. I really like it um, for, for 70 bucks. What a deal. Okay. So that is, the only downside is he doesn't have a website. You have to connect with him on Instagram and he'll send the bottle. You got to pay through Instagram and all that stuff. Um, so that's gentleman at number 14. Number 13 is back to uh, feel oud. And this is called Oud Balsam, which I actually used to have a bottle of this, uh, but I don't anymore. Used it all. And um, so Oud Balsam is this little bad boy right here. So I have the sample still. But um, Oud Balsam is um, sort of feel Oud's take. Remember how I said Sunrise and Set smells a little bit like Ocularia Blossom? Um, well, for me... Uh, Oud Balsam feels like uh, their take on Tabak Dori. But I actually like Tabak Dori more. Uh, I think I reviewed Tabak Dori on the channel within the last couple months. You can go check out my thoughts on, on Oud Balsam and Tabak Dori if you want. If I was going to buy one, it would be Tabak Dori for sure. Because I think Oud Balsam is almost like an easier to wear version. You know, the um, Oud isn't as, as animalic. It's a sweeter, uh, fruitier, Thai-smelling Oud. Um, and it just didn't have the oomph of Tabak Dori. Tabak Dori felt so complex and deep and rich, and Oud Balsam just felt like an easier to wear resinous, uh, resinous tobacco version of that. So they say Oud Balsam is a balsamic tobacco composition with a gourmand twist that puts the focus on a rare Thai Oud from nearly 100-year-old trees, uh, they highlight the essence of wild agar wood. It's resinous and spicy, bold and smooth, challenging and addictive. Okay, so that is uh, Oud Balsam at uh, number uh, 13. Number 12 is a Rogue fragrance, and this is a house I really rate, Manny Cross's house. Uh, this one's called Targi Forest. So I don't have the, the sample here, but um, it 
Uh, go go check out my review. Oh, actually, you know what? I do have the sample here, believe it or not. Uh, it's right here. So this is uh, Targi Forest. And Targi Forest um, is named after the Targi Forest. That is really beautiful. That is that is just, it's, it's such a beautiful fragrance. Um, it's green, it's woody, it's piney, it's... Um, you have sage sagebrush and juniper and geranium and citruses and and patchouli and musks, but Targi Forest is is um, supposed to be sort of a uh, memory for Manny Cross because he actually used to visit the Targi Forest as a child, um, and he spent a lot of time up there, uh, and. Um, so, so I think, or, or maybe it was him as a father and he would bring his kids to the Targi Forest. Either way, there was some sort of connection to the Targi Forest for him. And I remember while wearing this thinking just how, how realistic and, you know, there's nothing groundbreaking about this. I don't think this is, this is not going to be something that I don't think a perfume lover has smelled before. Maybe not in this let's say, uh, set of the way everything hits you and, um, you know, this particular version. But having this green, fresh, warming from the pine trees and all that stuff hit you and supposed to feel like the morning sun is on your face and all that stuff, I don't think that's a new concept. But the way he implemented it with such heart and soul and almost like you can feel the um, elegance of this and it's so uh, comforting for something um, so natural smelling like the outdoors. There's something so comforting about this. Um, woody, mossy, ambery, beautiful. Um, rich cedar wood, so woods, oak moss. And, um, you know, even though he says he's IFRA compliant, the oak moss here smells amazing. So yes, Targi Forest. I, I would highly recommend getting your schnoz on that bad boy if you have not yet. Uh, especially if you're a lover of green perfume. And if you are, stay tuned, because there's some amazing green fragrances coming up. Okay, so that's Targi Forest at number 12. Number 11 is a uh, fragrance from the house of Sherwood, again. And we have a decant this time. I would love a bottle of this stuff. This is maybe one of the best vetiver fragrances that I don't have in my collection. My God, man, this is like, you know what this is? It's like a boozy vetiver is what it smells like but it's Vetiver Royale. Just look at the color, it's beautiful. Um, and there's so many different types of Vetiver in this fragrance uh, from memory. I think I reviewed this like a year ago or something, so it's been a while. Um, but uh, it's bergamot, black pepper, green tea, java vetiver, lemon nutmeg, orange blossom, and tangerine with French iris, gardenia, jasmine sambac, java vetiver, Labdanum, Neroli, Amber, Cedarwood, Civet, Haitian Vetiver, Leather, Malaysian Vetiver, Musk, Myrrh, Oak Moss, Osmanthus, Patchouli, Sandalwood, Tobacco, and Tonka Bean. Beautiful fragrance. Absolutely stunning. With that, the smoothness of the green tea and pepper. It's got the freshness of the, of, um, it's got like the fresh cut grass side of Vetiver and the earthy Vetiver and the smoky Vetiver. It kind of covers all bases. I mean, as if you're a Vetiver lover, I don't know if you can do better than Vetiver Royale for 70 bucks. I mean, it is stunning, stunning fragrance. Um, so yes, Vetiver Royale at number uh, 11. And you can see two green fragrances back to back, Targi Forest and Vetiver Royale. Okay, next on the list, top 10, we've got a January scent project. And this is one of the rare ones. There's only 75 bottles made for the whole world. This may be hard to get your schnoz on, but um, I I really enjoyed it. It's so unique, uh, and it's called Cheng Men, Cheng Men by the House of January Scent Project. So Cheng Men was actually a project by John Beevil that was supposed to be. Um, that's kind of the imagery, by the way. Uh, very Asian, uh, Chinese uh, inspired. So this was inspired by three rare ouds that he used in here. And um, the writings of author Wen uh, Fu Lu, okay? 
It's so interesting. It's um, maybe one of the strangest oud fragrances I've ever smelled, but it's supposed to smell like a Chinese apothecary, right? So just imagine medicines and band-aids and toothpaste and there's an olive note in here. Um, Calais root in here. All kind of strange things. Um, and there was a drawing that he did. Um, aged Thai Oud, Cambodian Oud, Vietnamese Oud. Costas root. Um, Spike Nard. Olive Absolute. Champaka. I remember that red Champaka flower being very prominent. Yeah. Go check out my review. Um, I also showed the poster that he, um, he did a poster for this as well. Very, very interesting stuff. And I think there's a poem. Here's a poem from Wen Fu Lu from World of Dreams. At night, the treehouse became, becomes, sorry, at night, the treehouse became resorts of storytellers. And then the strumming of pipas was accompanied by the soft lilt of the Suzu dialect. Suzu style story storytelling and ballad sing and ballad singing were high pitched and beautiful, while the vending cry of those selling spiced tea flavored eggs was filled with sadness. I had not realized that a small winding lane could change so infinitely, be so different within and without, with its row rows of houses dividing land and water, silence and movement. On one side was the world with all its joys, sorrows, and hubbub. On the other side were waves of moonlight, and also that low, reverberating sound of an evening Buddhist bell, making it seem as if the world could be forgotten. Wow. Um, so yes, apothecary smells, glass jars, wooden drawers, all that stuff is where this is supposed to go. Very interesting. I will say that. Very, very, very strange, but very interesting. If you're someone who's like, man, I'm tired of smelling the same old, same old. If you can find yourself a bottle of Chengmen, you won't be saying that. Uh, that would scratch your itch. Okay. Uh, next on the list, we have number nine. And now we're getting into the individual ouds. There's some uh, history of oud collection by Arise Ladore that came out in 2023. I've got a live stream on it, but I also have individual reviews of each and every one. So if you really want to get into real oud, this is the collection I would recommend. So the cheapest of the bunch first. And I think, I think there's still bottles of this on the Ariz Ladori website. Running extremely low, but I think there's still bottles, which is crazy. Because this is maybe one of the best $140 you can spend on an oud fragrance. This is the history of Indonesian oud. Um, so there's the little blurb. Uh, and I love these bottles. I think they are just perfect. Um, and... Go um, watch my review, but in a nutshell, I remember saying that this reminded me of um, of sort of this like boiling cauldron, bubbling resins, um, and there was a I'm trying to remember which one, but there was a specific smell in here. I think it's this one. I think this one had this cola vibe, almost like this cherry pepsi feeling um anyways go watch my review if you really want to get my thoughts but uh yes the history of indonesian oud is um is probably the best 140 dollars you'll ever spend on on an oud fragrance and these are just oud and perfumers alcohol there uh, most of them are i think um when we get to the kinam one I'll, I'll go through some of the other notes but most of them are just supposed to be oud and alcohol, perfumers alcohol. They're not supposed to be other notes. So um, a great way to study oud. Number nine, the history of Indonesian oud. Number eight is uh, the only feel oud bottle that I have, a gift from a friend. And this is called Oud de Grand. Um, and Oud de Grand is probably my favorite jasmine oud. I, um, I know a lot of guys kind of balk when they hear jasmine. They hear white floral and they kind of balk. But um, this composition is 50% oud. It's um, natural Thai oud and the rarest type of distilled jasmine grandiflorum and sprinkled with a touch of pink pepper on top. Enjoy the beauty of the rarest natural ingredients used in abundance to achieve the most luxurious aromas. Okay. 
Man, I will tell you what. I um, reviewed a fragrance by Zerzhov called Alcott. Alcott wishes. It wishes. It stays up at night and dreams that it could be as beautiful as Eau de Grande. Eau de Grande is, um, I mean, it is like the jasmine oud for me. Uh, I, I've smelled a lot of oud fragrances, but and I've smelled a lot of jasmines. Uh, and I've actually smelled some real jasmine, thanks to Russian Adam. He sent me some jasmine grandiflorum. Uh, Otto, which is even rarer. I think it's not the absolute, but the Otto. And he sent me um, jasmine sambac. So I got a chance to kind of compare and contrast and see some of the differences and all that stuff. And um, uh, this is probably one of the most realistic smelling jasmines I've ever smelled. Not just the jasmine oud, but just the jasmine in and of itself. So Feel Oud's Oud de Grande. And I think you can still get that on the on the Feel Oud website. Number eight. Number seven. Uh, we are on to the history of Bengal Oud. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do a, a spray because uh, the history of Bengal Oud. 100% uh, rare Pure and wild Bengal oud oil distilled by East Bengal Agar Company. The approximate date of the distillation is the year 2000. Um, so the history of Bengal oud. Sometimes I get them mixed up from memory is the problem. I have to go back and watch my own videos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So woody. Um, animalic. In the opening, slightly little hints of smoke and resin. Uh, definitely that like, cord wood that um, you get a little bit of the fermented oud vibe right in the beginning. You know, fertilizer chips, whatever you want to call it. God, it's so good. I, I love, I mean... And you can see by the rankings, um, just pure oud for me is turning into like, you know, it's it's uh, one of the most complex smells. And, and when you smell some of these compositions from some of these houses nowadays that you're constantly let down with. And then you realize that this is the smell they're trying to imitate in a lot of fragrances that they're not even using real oud in. You just get to a point where you're like, screw it. I'll just wear the, wear the real thing. I mean, as complex and mysterious and, and um, even though this doesn't have like a top, a middle, and a base, like a normal perfume, it still goes through phases. The wood, the oud on, on your skin changes as time goes on. Oh, so intricate and deep. I love it. I am, I'm in love with this History of Oud collection. So number seven is uh, the History of Bengal Oud. Number six uh, is the History of Cambodian Oud. And this is rare, royal, 100% um, Oud from 1985. Good year. Was used as the only main ingredient for this perfume composition. Sinking Cambodian Oud dust smoke was then infused into the top notes by Russian Adam. So you'll have to go watch my reviews. Um, the only notes that each one says is, you know, oud, Cambodian oud, or um, Indonesian oud, or Bengal oud. Um, so Cambodian, um, Cambodian is very resinous from memory. Very resinous, hints of fruit. Um... But yes, lots of lots of resins in this particular oud from memory. So go check out my uh, review if you want to learn more about the history of Cambodian oud. And then at number five, we have the Kinam oud. Now, this is the only one where other notes have been added to recreate. So this is the most expensive of the bunch as well. And you can see there's actually a real um, agar wood cap that they used. This is actual oud wood, which is kind of cool. Cool little touch, if you will. Um, and this has grown on me a lot. So when I first got this collection, I was like, you know what? I'm going to like the more challenging ones. I'm going to like the, um, you know, this, this fresher, safer, cloudier, uh, minty, you know, musky 
airy type of oud is not my thing. But the more I wore it, the more I see why people go crazy for Kinom. It, it, um, is a, it's like a smell like nothing else. I mean, it really is. It's, um, it's so different. Uh, Russian Adam had to use a couple different types of ouds and a couple different notes to create that Kinom accord from, from my understanding. So, um, it's focused on actual wild Vietnamese white kinam and Chinese green kinam from a plantation, okay? So it, it used to be thought that in order to have real kinam, it had to be some old centurion grandmother tree uh, that they found in the wild because kinam needed 100 plus years in the tree's heart to change. Now they're finding, even in short time, seven to 10 years in the plantation, kinam is being formed. And the kinam is almost as amazing as the... Um, wild kinom that's that that was found long ago so some people don't know why that is but um but you know there's a lot of mystery around kinom but i have a couple videos on kinom uh one is called kinom urjwani by agar aura that is an amazing uh absolutely stunning kinom fragrance um another is called kemer kinom and another is called jungle kinom all three are on my channel and all three, I go into the history of Kinam and all that stuff on the video. So you can go check those out. But um, so here we use things like Ambrette, Oris, Clary Sage, Mimosa, and White Ambergris to try to recreate that cloudy Kinam feel. Kinam is very minty, fresh, airy, cloudy. It's uh, very different from your normal Oud profile. So um, to try to add the... Um, to try to add that kinamic, you know, note from, from the gentle, imagine like you're gently heating kinam oud on a, on a heater, right? And, and, and just getting small little whiffs. That's, that's what it's supposed to recreate. Okay. So that is number five. Number four is, I mentioned green fragrances earlier. I think this is one of the best modern green masculine Shepras, period. Okay. And, and this was, this came out right at the beginning of 2023. I thought this was going to be the fragrance of the year in 2023, but the artisanal houses have stolen my heart. Uh, but this is still absolutely amazing. Number four, it is Desandras by uh, Les Abstraits. So you can go check out my review. I've got a review of this. Um, this was sent to me by Eugene, which was very, very kind of him. Um, so Desandras is basically a green... Huh. I mean, um, so there, there, there's a couple fragrances that I smelled recently where Antoine Lee used a tuberose note and it's like no, no other tuberose note I've ever smelled. Some of those fragrances were for Eris Parfums. I've got a couple reviews on Eris Parfums. I'd urge you to watch those and, and watch my review of, um, Desandras. Um, but this is green galbanum, birch tar, Swiss pine tar, anise. It has this old school vintage feel. It has this 70s smoky green feel. If you've ever smelled Devon by Aramis, instantly it hit me when I smelled this. I was like, man, this is Antoine Lee's take on Devon. He loves leaving little breadcrumbs here in his in his fragrances. But there's African Hyrax in here. There's leather. There's patchouli. There's vetiver. There's oak moss. There's tuberose. There's mint, Moroccan mint. There's violet leaf. The, the uh, quality of the ingredients is outstanding. Um... Outstanding. I, I think this competes with any. These three fragrances he put out, um, Desandras and La Duleur Esquisse are my two favorite, but but Bellam was good as well. Um, compete with any niche house nowadays, quality-wise. You know, Remy's uh, Atelier Perfume House, whatever the hell it's called, the, the quality of the ingredients is mind-blowing. So check out Desandras if you've never smelled it. And if you love vintage, um, if you love vintage fragrances, uh, especially the green fragrances from the '70s, you'll love Desandras. It is something else. Um, so Desandras at number four. Number three, back to Arige La Dore. This is the history of Chinese oud, and this is one of the craziest ouds I've ever smelled. I have never ever smelled an oud like this. It is um, singular. 
It's so, my God, it's so, it's like burning a truffle. It's, it's like literally setting a truffle on fire. Um, it's like burning this mushroom, earthy, uh, viney, um, so. And then just imagine like you just threw in like along with that burnt truffle, you just threw in the civet paste and not the vintage civet you get in Civet de Nuit. No, no. This is the civet of old. This is the civet that that animalis note in Koros was trying to recreate. This is, fuck man, this is like one of the craziest ouds I've ever smelled, the history of Chinese oud. It is, uh, it is really something, something, really something. Um, go. So again, I got a full review. You can check it out. Number three, the history of Chinese oud. I struggled with number two and number one. I'm not going to lie. Um, I really, really struggled with what to put where. Uh, the oud head in me won, well, kind of won out um, because of just how much I've been loving just individual ouds. This history of Bengal oud, fuck. Man, so good. Um, but I will say this. This is one of the most impressive fragrances I've smelled in my journey. Not just in 2023 but in my journey so this deserves some love this is uh sherwood's ambrosia i love this stuff um maybe one of the best ambergris uh maybe one of the best sort of ambergris presentations i've ever smelled in my life now unfortunately again a couple things there's only 50 bottles for the whole world they were individually numbered so mine was 48 um so 50 bottles for the whole world. It's not easy to get. My God, man. I mean, it just, and, and the ambergris hits you right in the opening along with, um, along with a bunch of stuff actually, but, um, you get, uh, castorium. Uh, the main notes you're going to get are the ambergris, this sort of animalic castorium and a little bit of oud, Assam oud with a touch of rose, a touch of vetiver, a touch of all these other things, orange blossom, a touch of sandalwood, um, labdanum will come through later on in the dry down. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of things like lavender, although uh, honestly, I mean, I can see it as part of the concoction, but it really just feels like a blend. You know, it feels like a, it feels like a tightly wound ball. And um, there's French iris in here, there's jasmine sambac, there's bourbon vanilla, there's birch tar, but it's the ambergris that, that ambergris opening is one of the greatest I've ever smelled. It is so expertly done. Um, and what's crazy is, you know, when I showed things like, um, when I showed things like Gentleman, right? Okay, $70 fragrance, um, $70 fragrance that, um, uh, it smells like a $200 fragrance, right? This is a $300 fragrance for 30 mils instead of 50. And, uh, he told me that he basically made zero profit off of this, that he put this out to prove that he could do the type of perfumery that Russian Adam and Ensar are doing. This smells like an Ensar. Uh, if you've ever smelled some of Ensar's work and, and if you've ever watched any of my reviews on Ensar, I always say Ensar has this sparkle to them. And if you read any of the blurbs, he always talks about, uh, you know, having the carrier oils being heavily, um, you know, instead of just perfumers, alcohol using ambergris or musks as the carrier oil. This smells like the carrier oil is pure ambergris. It is so strong and evident and it has that sparkle. Um, and really this, this, takes the brand to a whole nother level for me. This takes him from doing something on a budget, doing good perfume on a budget, to doing amazing perfume, um, to doing the type of perfume where he's competing with the best, in my opinion. So Ambrosia is Sherwood stepping out, stepping into the light. You know, they are, um, they're announcing their arrival with this. This is, it's, it's just a shame that, only 50 bottles were made. And I, I understand, you know, everything is expensive in here. He's doing this as a hobby. I'm sure the real ambergris, real oud, all the crazy stuff that goes into here um, 
cost an arm and a leg to do 50 bottles that are even at that. But man, I, I wish everyone could smell this. This is... Just go watch my review of Ambrosia and just go look at the comments of the people who bought the bottle based on my video. Um, and or go look at go look at the comment on Parfumo. Um, she was a subscriber who bought the bottle off of uh, my recommendation and left a comment on uh, Parfumo or there's so many examples, but needless to say, Ambrosia is an absolute gem and I am uh, very blessed to have a bottle. Um, and if you don't believe me because he sent the bottle to me for free, don't, you know, I don't really give a shit. But um, I'm telling you, it is, it is, it is fire. It, this is definitely a house to, to look out for in the future. So that leaves number one. And that just leaves uh, one, the history of Oud collection left that we haven't done. And, you know, with my love of animalic Ouds, this has to be here. This is the history of Indian Oud. Um, the history of Indian Oud is basically... This fermented oud smell perfected, you know? It's so smooth and so most old oud um, distillation. So this is, this perfume consists of 98% pure oud oils from the region of Nagaland and Manipur distilled between the years 1970 to 1993. So vintage oud. And it is um, so smooth. And this, what ends up hitting you is almost this like cherry note. It's almost like this cherry wood, right? Um, my uncle used to have a bar called the Cherry Lounge, and it, and he's had it forever. I think he still has it. Uh, but he, um, when I was a little kid, I used to always think Cherry Lounge means cherry wood. Um, and this has this cherry wood smell, but it's so unbelievably smooth. The smoothness of this as it dries down after the animalics really start to um, blend into the rest of it. My God, man. It is just out of this world good. In the history of Indian Oud is, um, is, is my number one fragrance for 2023, but Ambrosia came damn close, I won't lie. Um, and again, apologies for leaving Sar off the 2022 list, but... Um, uh, so thanks for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts as always. Uh, I did not keep it under an hour, but that's the way it goes. Some moron left me a comment on one of my videos. I think it was the, um, I think it was the boundless video. And he was like, well, I just wasted 34 minutes of my life. Uh, you know, I, you rambled too much. And I, and I wrote him back and said, why would you waste time leaving me a comment? Just don't watch motherfucker. Uh, anyways, but, uh, yes, I, my videos are long. I appreciate my regulars who um, appreciate all my subscribers and, um, you know, they're, they're, there's probably very few people who are willing to sit down and do the type of videos that I do with this amount of fragrance being shown and discussed and all that stuff. But that does take time. I understand that. Put me on two times speed is my recommendation. But uh, as always, thanks for watching. I love you guys. Cheers. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.